Ah, <sighs> I remember the days leading up to Pokemon X and Y. It was probably the worst time to be a Pokemon fan. The Gen 5 games were ridiculed for no real reason, and Black and White 2 were some of the worst selling mainline games ever. And the new games were going to be 3D on the 3DS, so instead of having the best looking sprites on the platform, a title the series had held since its inception almost, the people in Pokemon in the game are now generic standing models or floating things. And then they had the nerve to introduce the keys! Oh god, the meltdowns, the abject horror, the whiny image boards were never the same. Admittedly though, behold, a Pokemon. Coming from living garbage, ice cream cones, and the gears, it's fair to say that the general gamer public weren't too keen on this new Pokemon. <laughs> Looking back though, Klefki is actually pretty well thought out, especially considering the region it's found in, Kalos, which is based on France. I mean, Klefki is literally just a shadow lane, but you don't know what that is. I'll show you soon. But even not considering the Frenchy bits, it's got like a triple meaning. It is every clef. Clef is French for key. It's shaped like a musical clef. And it's got a cleft lip. And it's a clefto. It steals keys. A little kleptomaniac. Just like how I'm going to steal your attention right now because you're going to watch this whole video. Please? But first, hey, the key to your heart is probably a really good mattress, which is what today's sponsor wants to bring you. Getting good sleep has all sorts of positive effects on your mood and your mental state. I mean, obviously, you probably knew that already. But what you might not know is that being comfortable and cool on your bed plays a big part in just how restful your sleep is. It's the key. Which is why I'm happy to say that this video is sponsored by Helix Sleep. Over half a decade ago, I took their quick and very easy online sleep quiz, which recommended their mid night lux to me and my wife, and we got it. And I, my wife, and my cat still love it. I mean, we use it every night, and it's got another five years left on its ten-year warranty. That's like half my life! Oh wait. That's like a third of my life! When we first got the mattress that arrived in a box that was surprisingly small given that it's a whole gosh darn mattress, and setting it up, letting it breathe was easy to do. And it was totally worry-free because they offer a 100-night sleep trial. That's the key to happy customers, you see. You let them try it to make sure they want to buy it. Good stuff. It was so perfect for us right away, though. But if for whatever reason it wasn't, they not only give you a full refund, but also will come and pick the mattress back up for you. They really just want to make sure you have a good time, good dreams. And you can't have good dreams on a non-perfect mattress or a mattress that makes you melt like hot steel. That's why my favorite part is the cooling cover, which helps dissipate excess body heat away from me. It's quite nice. So why not make it a New Year's resolution to improve your sleep, huh? Improving sleep is the key to a better life in general, after all, and I can help with that. I've got a special link for you down in the description, helixsleep.com slash Bloxton, where you can get up to $200 off plus two free pillows. What a deal! And they offer flexible payment plans and financing options so anyone can invest in a better bed. Even Klefki. Though I bet you're still stealing, aren't you? Yeah. Now, it might not be super obvious at first, but yes, clef key has elements from a musical key, or a clef specifically. In terms of reading sheet music, a clef is a symbol at the beginning of the staff, the lines of music that notes rest on or between, which is used to indicate which notes are represented by the lines and spaces on the staff, or stave, if you're British and pronounce taco like taco, so essentially you're wrong all the time. But essentially, the musical clef is like a map key that tells you how to read that particular sheet of music, which makes sense, since clef literally means key in French. And now I can see you putting two and two together. Yes, clef key's name origins. It is indeed another dark dark or turtle turtle in the world of object mon. Its name literally is just key key. But it's fancy because it's French, oui oui. I'm letty do fromage and all that. <laughs> Now there are three kinds of musical clef symbols, the G, F, and C clef, or treble clef, bass clef, and alto slash tenor clef, respectively. And clef key's general shape is most reminiscent of a treble clef, especially if we turn our little friend upside down, like so. While treble clef is most definitely the most recognizable clef, the key-shaped horn on clef key's head is like the two dots on the right of the bass clef, and the fact that the arm parts of its key ring go upwards before they go outwards is almost like a, a heart 
It's like the two arms of the Alto Clef are turned sideways, so I'd say Clef Key is a pretty good synthesis of all three clefs, all three musical keys. And if we keep the key-shaped horn on the top of its head, the official portrayal of Clef Key would have five keys total. And as we saw before, there are five lines in a typical musical staff. Pokedex. Clef Key threaten attackers by fiercely jingling their keys at them. And jingling keys is pretty musical. If in a in a sort of cacophonous sort of definition of musical. Oh gosh, I would hate to be surrounded by them. Uh, yeah, no wonder it learns metal sound. Speaking of metal, Clef Key is a fairy that steals keys, which is why it is both fairy and steel type. And the idea of a mischievous little fey creature that's stealing everyday items such as keys out of your houses, that's been around about as long as humans have had houses or items to put in them. I mean, how else can you explain why I keep losing my socks when I go to get them out of the dryer? It's the sock goblins! <laughs> and now I want to see a regional Clef Key that steals socks and it's electric fairy because of the static electricity from the dryer. Plus, there's the common ability of fairies and other fey creatures to be able to open doorways to other worlds or dimensions, which Clef Key can do. And it was a big thing in the Pikachu short, Pikachu, what's this key? Where it opened many doors to many strange dimensions for Pikachu and his friends. That also explains its signature move, Fairy Lock. It literally locks up the battlefield, making opponents unable to escape, which seems like it'd only be possible to do through dimension-altering means. But now, who's to blame for this inanimate object of a creature? Well, an interview with Game Informer revealed that its design came from Mana Ibe, the Mons artist and designer herself. Since the Kalos region has a lot of history, we felt that we could attach some story elements to a key design. The idea for Clef Key came from thinking of old mansions and secret keys and such. You know what? That's fair. You think of old, locked away secrets and mansions and stuff, and you, so you think of French dramas. Clearly. But the French themselves, or even the Franks before them, didn't actually really do anything for keys. Locks that need a specific key to unlock them have been around since at least ancient Egypt and ancient Babylon. And then the ancient Romans figured out how to use metal for them, which were obviously way less clunky than the big wooden ones. And then the Middle Ages throughout the world saw even more improvements to the security and space efficiency of locks and keys. And once keys became small enough, rich people in ancient Rome would wear their keys like a ring or on the end of a necklace as a fancy accessory to say, Hey look, I have fancy stuff worth locking away. Ooh, I'm rich. But like, that just seems to me like they're asking to be robbed. But maybe thieves and robbers had more decorum and honor back then. I don't know. And then during the good old crusades in the second millennium AD, many of the men went away to go hurt people for their god of peace and love. And the barons and lords and nobles and what have you needed a way to keep their keys for their safes and storerooms and stuff safe. So most of them wound up giving their keys to their lady, the old ball and chain. And thus she ended up with a literal series of chains with all of the keys attached to them. Basically a precursor to the modern keychain. And the term for this was Chatelaine, which directly translates to female castle occupant, or mistress of the house. Though, as time went on, it eventually became the term for the chains of keys and the brooch-like piece that attached them all to her dress itself. Attaching all of their keys to this is like how Clef Key never lets go of a key that it likes, so people give it the keys to vaults and safes as a way to prevent crime. It's literally what Chatelaines did. Both definitions of Chatelaine here, so yes, Clef Key is both a Chatelaine, the object, and a Chatelaine, the person, in charge of the keys. Clever. And while originally meant to be for keys, after a while, ladies were like, Hey, why don't we use this set of fancy chains to store other useful things for our own everyday lives? So, yes, they basically turned it into an extremely ornate ladies' tool belt, attaching things like fancy-looking embroidery scissors, smelling salts, tiny purses, and the house's seal for sending letters, and even ear picks or scoops, which were like a precursor to Q-tips. And having all of these in a place that she could easily access instead of having to dig through her dress's huge folds definitely sounds convenient. And yeah, you take away the things attached to them, 
and it's definitely shaped pretty similar to Clef Key without the keys. Now, why in the France region specifically, other than the whole Chatelaine thing? Well, I guess because, yeah, most of the advances in locksmithing did happen in Europe, and Kalos was the first Europe-inspired region. However, France itself does have something specific that has to do with locks and keys, the Paris Bridge of Locks. You see, there was an Italian movie that came out in 2007, I Want You, and it had two main characters seal their love by attaching a lock onto a bridge, and then throwing the key into the river below. And then the people of Paris were all like, Oh, oui, oui, we, we are the city of love! Why don't we do that here? And so the people started doing that there, right at Pont des Arts, because the view is incredible, and more importantly, the grills and rails and lampposts on the bridge there lended themselves beautifully to having locks attached to them, usually with the lovers' names and date on them, and the keys subsequently thrown into the river. And this trend continued for quite some time. From 2008 to 2014, which happens to be the time period of X and Y's development and release, a total of over 700,000 locks, weighing 45 tons, or the equivalent of 20 elephants for you Americans, were attached to the bridge. And yes, there is an end date there, because eventually Paris closed off the bridge, took all of the locks off, and did stuff to the bridge to make it way harder to attach locks to it. And no, they weren't just doing it because they don't like people having fun, they were doing it because the locks were so heavy and the bridge was beginning to collapse. But of course, the removal of the Bridge of Love locks sure didn't stop Paris people and tourists from the tradition, you can still find locks just randomly strewn about the city in pretty places, especially in front of the Roman Catholic Church thanks to a rom-com show called Emily in Paris. But now we journey away from lock and key inspirations for this mon and on to medical conditions. This is an object, Mon. Are we sure about that? And why have I never seen anyone point out that Clef Key looks like it has a cleft lip? Like, it's literally in the Pokémon's name. Do most people just not know what a cleft lip or a cleft palate is? I mean, they happen in 1.5 out of every thousand births, so that's actually pretty common. Okay, so I guess this means it's my job to spread the knowledge of what a cleft lip slash palate is. A cleft lip is when the top of the lip doesn't form right in the womb and just kind of keeps going up through the philtrum. That's what you call the indent on your upper lip, right below your nose. And it either stops a bit of the way up, or goes all the way up into the nose, and can either be unilateral or bilateral. And if left untreated with surgery, it can lead to problems with nursing due to the inability to create suction. It also leads to speech problems, frequent nose infections, and even frequent ear infections because of just how interconnected the nose and ears and all of this truly is. It makes the person's upper lip area kind of resemble the mouth nose connection of a cat or a dog or other mammal, which is why in medieval times this was often referred to as cat's lip or hare's lip. But okay, now if you use your tongue to feel the roof of you can't understand me if I'm doing it actively. Now, if you use your tongue to feel the roof of your mouth, you feel that faint line going up and down the middle? That's because, fun fact, when you were a fetus, your palate started as two separate pieces, which then melded together as your fetal body formed. Unless, of course, you have a cleft palate. In which case, it either stopped halfway through or never even started. And with this one too, there are indeed unilateral and bilateral cleft palates. And if the palate is cleft, that means the lip usually is too, because that's just how face works. I actually knew a couple of kids growing up who had the cleft lip, but it had healed pretty well after surgery, and so I guess it's just never really occurred to me that other people might not know or have even heard about it. Especially as most people, in the Western world anyway, do get it fixed while they're still babies. But it is still relevant here because Klefki's mouth and nose area looks just like a cleft lip. And also a keyhole. The fact that clef is French for key and sounds similar to cleft, as in divided or split, is just the perfect happenstance and I love when that happens in Pokémon. Who knows if it was intentional or not though? I sure don't. Was that done on purpose? Like, do you think Game Freak actually knew that there is actual science that could explain why Alolan Raichu gets psychic type from eating pancakes? Or is that a happy coincidence too? We did a whole video about that here, and I think you'll really like it. Check it out, and never stop using your noggin.